story time, story time, story time again, story time, story time, story time again. and welcome to San Bruno Library Presents Once Upon a Time, story time with the San Bruno Library. We have some great stories today. Today we're going to read about pizzas. That's one of my favorite foods of all time, so we're going to have several books about pizza today. Are you ready to sing our welcome song, though? I think maybe you remember it from last time. Are you ready? We're glad you're here today. We're glad you're here today. Hi-ho the merry -o. we're glad you're here today. Good, I am glad you're here today. Our first book today is called The Little Red Hen Makes a Pizza, retold by Philemon Sturgis and illustrated by Amy Walrod. Are you ready? There's lots of pages at the beginning before we get to the story. <gasps> the little red hen had eaten the last slice of her tasty loaf of bread. She'd sipped a cup of chickweed tea and taken her nap. Now she was hungry again, so she scratched through her cupboard and spied a can of tomato sauce. Mm, why don't I make a lovely little pizza, she said to herself. She rummaged through her pan drawer. There were bread pans, cake pans, muffin pans, frying pans, all kinds of pans. But not one single pan was large and round and flat. Cluck, she said, I need a pizza pan. She stuck her head out the window. Good morning, she called. Does anybody have a pizza pan? Not I, said the duck. Not I, said the dog. Not I, said the cat. Very well then, I'll fetch one myself, said the little red hen. So she went to the hardware store. She bought a pizza pan, a large mixing bowl, a pizza slicer, and some other stuff. How do you see all the things in her little red wagon? When she got home, she opened the cupboard. She saw beans and rice, sugar and spices, jars of jam and jars of honey, and even pickled eggplant, but no flour. Plop, she said, I need flour. She stuck her head out the window. Hello, she said. We'll run to the store and get me some flour. Not I, said the duck. Not I, said the cat. Not I, said the dog. Well, they weren't very helpful, were they? Very well then, I'll fetch some myself, said the little red hen. So she went to the supermarket. She bought some flour, some salt, some oil, and some other stuff. Do you see all the things she bought? When she got home, she opened the fridge. Cluck, she said. There's cream cheese, blue cheese, string cheese, and Swiss cheese, but no mozzarella. Hmm. So, she stuck her head out the window. Excuse me, she said. Who will go to the store and buy me some mozzarella? Not I, said the duck. Not I, said the dog. Not I, said the cat. Very well then, I'll fetch some myself, said the little red hen. So the little red hen went to the delicatessen. She bought some mozzarella, pepperoni and olives, some mushrooms, onions and garlic, a can of eight small anchovies, and some other stuff. When she got home, the little red hen put on her apron and stuck her head out the window. Good afternoon, she said. Who will help me make some pizza dough? And what do you think those animals said? Not I, said the duck. Not I, said the dog. Not I, said the cat. Oh, very well then, I'll make it myself, said the little red hen. So she put the flour and some other stuff into her mixing bowl and stirred and mixed and mixed and kneaded and kneaded and kneaded and pounded until she had a big ball of pizza dough. 
After the dough rose, the little red hen rolled it flat and folded it and rolled it again, and spun it around her head several times. That's pretty fancy pizza making. When the dough was just right, she tossed it way up high in the air, one last time for good luck, and put it in her pizza pan. Then she stuck her head out the window. Excuse me, she said, who will help me make the topping? Not I, said the duck. Not I, said the dog. Not I, said the cat. Oh, very well then, I'll make it myself, said the little red hen. So she chopped and grated and grated and sliced. Next, she opened her can of tomato sauce and spread it all over the pizza dough. On top of that, she put some grated mozzarella, some sliced pepperoni, some chopped olives, some mushrooms, some onions and garlic, eight small anchovies, and some other stuff. But no pickled eggplant. The little red hen looked at her pizza. It looked just right. She put it in the oven and sat down to sip a cup of chickweed tea. Pretty soon, a delicious smell drifted from the oven. It filled the room and floated out the window. My lovely pizza must be ready, she thought. Mm, and who do you think smelled that pizza outside? The duck and the dog and the cat? Let's see. Oh, it was lovely pizza, but it was not little. Look how big it is. So she stuck her head out the window. Good evening, she said. Would anybody like some pizza? Can you guess what the duck said? Can you guess what the dog said? Can you guess what the cat said? I think you're right. I think that they said yes. They all said yes, of course. But the cat scraped off most of the topping from his share. When the pizza was all gone, the little red hen made herself another cup of chickweed tea. Then she asked, who will help me do the dishes? Now can you guess what the duck, the dog, and the cat each said? They each said, I will, I will, I will. Oh, they turned out to be a little bit more helpful after all, didn't they? And they did do all of the dishes for the little red hen. The end. That is, the little red hen makes a pizza. Did you like that story? I did. All right, let's put that one in our story time rack up here. And we'll read a story about what if you don't make a pizza at home? What if you need to have it delivered? Lots of people have pizza delivered to their house. This is a story about that. It's called Hi, Pizza Man by Virginia Walter with pictures by Ponder Gemble. Mama! I'm hungry, cried the little girl. I know you're hungry, Vivian. It's so hard to wait for the pizza man to come. He'll be here soon. What will you say when the doorbell rings and we open the door? What would you say to a pizza man? Hi, pizza man. That's what she wants to say. But what if it's not a pizza man? What if it's a pizza woman? Then what will you say? Hi, pizza woman. But what if it's not a pizza woman? What if it's a pizza kitty? Then what will you say? Can you guess? Meow, meow, pizza kitty. What if it's a pizza dog? Then what will you say? Woof, woof, pizza dog. What if it's a pizza duck? Then what will you say? Quack, quack, pizza duck. What if it's a pizza cow? What will you say then? Moo, pizza cow. What if it's a pizza snake? What will you say then? Pizza snake. Look at how funny the pizza snake is carrying the pizza. 
and he has three bow ties on. What if it's a pizza dinosaur? What will you say if it's a pizza dinosaur? Roar, pizza dinosaur. Ding dong. Hi, pizza man. The pizza man has arrived. The end. That is Hi, Pizza Man by Virginia Walter. I bet you can make up all kinds of different animals who might come to your door delivering pizza and the different ways that you would say hello to them. Well, that was a good one. Hi, Pizza Man. Okay, we're going to do some fun things with our flannel board right now. Are you ready? Let's put this up on the stand and let's count how many pizzas do we have today. One, two, three, four, and five pizzas. Oh, my goodness, look at all those delicious pizzas. Five little pizzas all in a row. The first one said, I'm made with pepperoni, you know. The second one said, I'm made with sausage and cheese. The third one said, don't eat me, please. The fourth one said, I'll be your dinner tonight. And the fifth one said, oh, someone's taken a bite. Five little pizzas all in a row. Would you like to eat them? Yes, I know. That's pretty fun. Let's count backwards and make the pizzas disappear. Five, four, three, two, and one. Excellent. And let's do another little pizza flannel board. Are you ready? With smaller pizzas, we have one, two, three, four, and five pizzas. Ready? Five little pizzas sitting in a row. Toss one up, and then there were four. Four little pizzas sitting in a row. Toss it up, and then there were three. Three little pizzas sitting in a row. Toss one up, then there are two. Two little pizzas sitting in a row. Toss one up, and then there is one. One little pizza sitting in a row. Toss it up, and then there were none. No little pizzas all in a row. That's good. Thank you for helping me with that. Okay, it's time to take a break. Hope to see you on the other side. Bye-bye. trouble, Sam. My tooth is falling out. At your age, it's normal for your baby teeth to fall out. Why did I have to take care of it if it was just going to fall out? Baby teeth are very important for talking properly and chewing your food. Your baby tooth saves a place for your adult tooth and guides you into the right spot. Cool. Oops. <laughs> See? It falls out all by itself. <laughs> Welcome back to Once Upon a Time, San Bruno Library's Cable Storytime. Today we're reading books all about pizza. Are you ready for the next one? This is called A Job for Watilda by Carolyn and Mark Buner. There were cats on the table, cats on the chair, cats on the sofa, the bookshelves, the stairs. Every half-starved stray, every unwanted kitten, seemed to find its way into Watilda's heart and kitchen. Watilda loved them all, but it was getting hard to feed them. They didn't like bat wing stew or roast newt, which was all Watilda could cook. And the mice had long since disappeared. We're down to our last dried rat, Watilda worried. The cats queried. There's only one thing to do, Watilda decided. I'll have to get a job. I'll go talk to Aunt Bort. Maybe I can work for her. 
Watilda kissed 47 soft noses and set off for Aunt Fort's hair palace. Eventually, Aunt Fort was persuaded to hire Watilda. Please comb Mrs. Hatrack's hair, Aunt Fort grumbled. Watilda began to comb. How oh, boring, she thought. I can do better than that. Mrs. Hatrack's wispy hair reminded Watilda of spider threads. She began tying knots here and there, and soon Mrs. Hatrack's hair found out in an enormous web. Hmm, something's missing, Watilda murmured. Reaching deep in her pocket, she pulled out a small black spider and placed it carefully in the web of hair. Don't move, she cautioned. Mrs. Hatrack and the spider held very still. Watilda sprayed the web with hairspray until it glistened. Beautiful, she exclaimed. Mrs. Hatrack looked up from her magazine. Eek! she screamed. Watilda, Aunt Fort thundered, what have you done? I think it's pretty, Watilda said defensively. You're fired, said Aunt Fort. Glumly, Watilda shuffled home. I got fired, she told the cats. They were all very hungry that day. Watilda searched the job ads in the newspaper. Carpenter, secretary, exterminator. Rats, mumbled Watilda. Then her eyes lit up as she read. Delivery person wanted evenings. Must have own transportation. Apply in person at Dingling Pizza. It's perfect, she cackled. Matilda blew 47 kisses, grabbed her broom, and ran out. She skidded to a stop at Dingling Pizza and waited nervously with the other applicants. Suddenly, the door burst open. Out came Joe Dingling, his arms loaded with boxes. Here you go, barked Joe. Five pizzas each to deliver. The first one back gets the job. Arms and legs flew as everyone grabbed a stack of pizzas and raced away. Watilda mounted her broom and chanted, Notions and potions, buzzard stew, curdle a girdle with rattlesnake glue, rickety rackety my one green eye, loomity broomity, time to fly. Watilda shot up into the night. She dipped and swooped through the air to the first house on her list. Mrs. Pink was surprised to get her pizza so soon. Extraordinary, she fluttered, counting out money for the pizza. Watilda whizzed around the block to the Muzzleses, down the street to the Zippets, and then flew across town to Mr. Boney's. She knocked and knocked. Finally, Mr. Boney came to the door. Thank you, he whispered, dropping the money penny by penny by penny into Watilda's hand. Watilda danced from foot to foot, and at last she was on her way. I'm making great time, she exclaimed. I'm going to win. As she was rising up in the air, Watilda heard a tiny sound. Silently, she hovered. Meow, meow. Anxiously, Watilda peered around. A bit of white, high in the tree, caught her eye. It was a cat. Oh, the poor little thing. Just then, a motorcycle roared around the corner. It was one of the people trying for the job at Dingalings. Oh, what shall I do? Watilda agonized. If I stop to help the kitten, someone else will go back to Dingalings before I do. I'll come back later. She began to glide away. Meow, meow. Wait, I'm coming, Watilda shouted. Don't move. She couldn't resist that kitten. Watilda scrambled onto a low branch. Twigs snagged at her clothes and caught in her hair as she crawled upward. Meow. The kitten stared at Watilda with wide, scared eyes. Here, kitty, 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 kitty. Watilda reached up. Come here, baby. Inch by inch, the kitten eased towards her. As Watilda reached out to grab the kitten, a sudden gust of wind shook the tree. Watilda and the kitten plummeted head over heels to the ground below. Are you all right? Watilda asked. Meow, answered the kitten. Well then, let's go. Yeah. 
Luckily, at the last house, Mrs. Noodle was knitting on the front porch. Matilda tossed the pizza box onto her lap. Here's your pizza, she cried, and snatched the money from the hands of a dazed Mrs. Noodle. Then Matilda spun around and headed back to Dingaling's. There she is, flying off in the air. Matilda had never flown so fast. The wind whipped her hair and cloak. Joe's mouth dropped open. How did you get it? How did you get here? It's only been 15 minutes. Matilda's eyes danced as Joe slapped her on the back. The job is yours, cried Joe. Here, have some pizza. That night, Matilda tripped lightly up to her front steps and opened the door. I'm home, she sang, and I got the job. Brrr, brrr. Forty-eight cats tried to rub against her legs. I just love it. And Matilda set the dingling special combo down on the table. You're going to love it too. Because she can share pizza with the cats. And they did. Oh, look at the kitties. They all have a slice of pizza to enjoy. Mmm. That was a job for Watilda. That was a good job for her, wasn't it? She can fly on her broom to deliver pizza. Okay, our next book today is called Pizza Pizza by William Steig. Pete's in a bad mood. Just when he's supposed to play ball with the guys, it decides to rain. Oh, look at the rain. Pete's father can't help noticing how miserable his son is. He thinks it might cheer Pete up to be made into a pizza. So he sets him down on the kitchen table and starts kneading the dough. And stretching it this way and that. Now the dough gets whirled and twirled in the air. Next, some oil is generously applied. It's really just water. And then comes some flour. It's really just talcum powder. And then some tomatoes. They're really checkers. Pete can't help giggling when his mother says she doesn't like tomatoes on her pizza. All right, says his father, no tomatoes, just some cheese. The cheese is really just pieces of paper. How about some pepperoni, Petey? Pete can't answer because he's only some dough and stuff. But when that dough gets tickled, it laughs like crazy. Pizzas aren't supposed to laugh. Pizza makers aren't supposed to tickle their pizzas, Pete says. Well, says his father, it's time for this pizza to be put in the oven. Oh, here he is carrying him over to the oven. It's the pretend couch. Oh, now our pizza is nice and hot. Pete's father brings the pizza to the table. It's time to slice the pizza, he says. But the pizza runs away and the pizza maker chases him. The pizza gets captured and hugged. Now the sun has come out. And so the pizza decides to go and look for his friends. The end. Would you like to be made into a pizza someday? Maybe your parents or your friends can make you into a pizza with some pretend things that you have at your house. That's Pizza Pizza. Our last book today is called Little Nino's Pizzeria by Karen Barber. My dad, Nino, makes the best pizza in the world, and I'm his best helper. I help knead the pizza dough, and I help stir the pizza sauce. And I help grate the cheese. When the customers are finished, I know how to pick up their plates and carry out the dirty dishes. I help give the extra pizzas to hungry people in the alley who have no homes. 
and I help my dad serve our pizza pies. Pizza people come from all over town to eat at Little Nino's. They wait in long lines because our restaurant is so small. One night, a man came to see my dad after the last pizza. What did he want? That night, my dad told my mom we would be making lots more money. The next day, my dad locked up Little Nino's. Soon, he opened a big, fancy, expensive restaurant. He called it Big Nino. I tried to help in the dining room, but the waiters tripped over me and spilled a lot of food. I tried to help in the kitchen, but Francois, the chef, pushed me away. I asked my dad how I could help, but he was too busy to even notice me. No matter how I tried to be helpful, I was always in the way. So I went home. I missed little Nino's. And there it is, all closed up. But then one night, my dad came home from Big Nino extra tired. He said, I miss cutting tomatoes and chopping onions and kneading dough. I'm tired of so much paperwork and money talk, he shouted. I want, I want to make pizza. And then he looked at me. Tony, my best helper. So the next day, we went back to Little Nino's. Soon we reopened it, and the man from Big Nino got a new person to be in charge there. My dad Nino still makes the best pizza in the world, but he changed the name of the restaurant. He called it Little Tony's Pizzeria. Oh, wouldn't it be nice to have a restaurant named after you? The end. That is Little Nino's Pizzeria. I hope that you liked all of our pizza books today. I enjoyed reading them to you. Maybe you can make a pizza at home, or if you're lucky, get one delivered to you. All right, it's time to say goodbye. Are you ready to sing our goodbye song? Good. Oh, it's time to say goodbye to our friends. Oh, it's time to say goodbye to our friends. Oh, it's time to say goodbye. Make a smile and wave goodbye. Oh, it's time to say goodbye to our friends. Bye-bye. So sit me down and let the spell begin. I'll find myself in story time again. Story time, story time, story time. Oh